Hello and welcome. My name is George and my channel is all about helping you get the most out of Logic Pro so that you can record and produce your best music in your home studio. Today we're going to look at creating a drum beat using the step sequencer, so let's dive in. So I'm going to start by creating a software instrument. Now let's go ahead and load in the drum machine designer. So I'll go here where it says instrument, down to drum machine designer. Now we can either create a custom drum kit piece by piece by choosing different kick drums and snares and hi-hats and so on. Or if we click up here at empty kit, then we can load in some prefabricated kits. So why don't we go with this boom bap kit and here you can preview all the different sounds in the kit. but we're gonna close this for now. And now in order to view the step sequencer, we have to create a pattern region. So to do that, we just go over here and right click and we can go create pattern region. And that brings up our step sequencer here. I'm just gonna go ahead and close our library to give us a bit more room. So here you'll notice these different blocks and all of our different drum pieces below here. And you'll notice there's 16 blocks. So right now we're set for 16 steps. So that's the length of our pattern. And each one of these blocks corresponds to a 16th note, which we can change here. Since we're in 4-4 four, four time, that means that each four of these blocks corresponds to one beat, one quarter note, and we have four quarter notes, so this is one bar long. So currently our pattern is one bar long. If we want to extend the pattern to longer, then we can increase the number of steps. So two bars would be 32 steps and 64 would be four bars. Let's go back down to 16 steps for the moment. Now let's start by creating a loop over our region here. So since we're just dealing with one bar, I'll just do a loop over the first bar. I could place the loop over the entirety of the region because since our pattern's only 16 steps, one bar, it'll just repeat for the four bars that I have right now anyways. So it doesn't really make a difference. Now when I press play, you'll see that it moves through the steps. And if I turn on the metronome, you'll notice that the quarter note beats all fall every four steps. So for those of you that are new at programming drums, I'm gonna give you a few tips to get started. Our basic rock and pop drum tracks usually have the kick starting on beats one and three. So beat one, being the very first square here, and beat three would be over here. Now you'll notice we also have two kicks, so we can go between the two and choose which one we want, or have both. In this case, I'm just gonna go with this kick two for now. And for the snare, in most instances, that's gonna land on beats two and four. So let's go with snare one, and we'll put that on two and four. So now it sounds like this. So that's kind of our basic beat. Now in order to come up with a bit of a more interesting drum beat, what you wanna do is mess around with the kick pattern. So why don't I get rid of this kick over here and I'll just stay with the kick on beat one and I'm gonna leave my snares on beats two and four. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press play and I'm just gonna place the kick in different places until I find something that I like. Okay, so that's a little bit more interesting than what we had before. Now let's look at adding in some hi-hats. So I'll scroll down a little bit here. Now your basic hi-hat groove might just be eighth notes. So that would be every second step. And that sounds something like this. So 
So these are just closed hi-hats on eighth notes. We also have an open hat and a second hat here, which is usually uh, either half open or a pedaled hat. So why don't we replace this last hit with our open hat, and that gives us this. So that's kind of a basic drum groove. Now, I would suggest playing around with the hat patterns a little bit more. So why don't we get rid of all these? I'll keep, uh, or get rid of that one as well, actually. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit this little arrow here. And this gives me a few different options. It gives me the option of actually repeating the note. So making smaller subdivisions within each step. So for example, if I just click on one, then I just get the one hit. But if I go to note repeat here, then I can click and drag, and now I can fit two hi-hats within this one step. And I can do, let's say three. four, and so on and so on. So I'm gonna play around with that a little bit. Okay, so there's a little bit more variety than what we had earlier. Now, you'll notice above here, we also have velocity. So that's how hard each hit is. So if you want, you can adjust the strength of each hit to create a bit more variety. Or you can also go here and go to chance. Now changing the percentage here will change the likelihood of this hi-hat actually playing. So at 100%, it's gonna play every time. If I dial it down to 50, then it's only gonna play that hit 50% of the time. So I can change this to make a little bit of randomness. And now my hi-hats won't be exactly the same every time. Sometimes some notes will drop out and other times they'll be played. Now let's just build up our loop a little bit more by adding a few more elements. Maybe we'll look at some shakers. Now, as you can see, we don't actually have any shakers being shown right here. We open up our drum designer. We can see that in fact, there is a shaker loaded in. So I'm gonna go down here to the plus button and go kit pieces, add all. So that's gonna add all the kit pieces that aren't currently visible. And then now we get all these other pieces that we didn't have before. So let's add in a few moments of shaker here. Okay, maybe some wood block. 
Or how about the triangle? All right, now we can go back uh, when we go back to our kick and we can maybe double those up. We could add some claps to the snare as well. So now we've got a one bar loop created. If we wanted to extend this loop and make it longer and make some variations, so then we can increase the steps that we looked at earlier. So let's go to, let's say 32 steps. And then now it's twice as long, but we can make any changes that we want at the end. So for example, maybe we only want that hi-hat at the very, the open hat rather, at the very end. And maybe we want to add a crash at the very beginning. I have to take off my loop to make this a bit longer. So why don't we just loop the whole thing here. And maybe we'll do even like a tom thing at the end. Let's see what that sounds like. So there you go. So there's an easy way to create drum loops using the step sequencer. You can do everything using simply your mouse, so you don't need a MIDI keyboard. And it's easy to experiment and change different patterns by clicking on and off different step sequences in the grid. Now, if you're having a hard time getting started and you feel like you need some inspiration, then you've also got these patterns down here that you can take a look at. So if you don't see that, make sure you click this icon. And under patterns here, we can go to drums and choose any one of these patterns. And you can see what those sounds like. And then from here, you can make this your own. And get some inspiration that way. So I hope that helps you getting started creating some drum beats in Logic Pro using the step sequencer. If you have any more questions about creating drum beats, please leave those in the comments. And if you want to improve your workflow using Logic Pro, make sure to download my free Logic Pro hotkey cheat sheet by following the link in the description below. I hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you in the next one.